The Bible includes imprecatory prayers and pronouncements of woes and curses because God has enemies that will ultimately be defeated. The Psalms contain many calls for God to enact judgment, like Psalms 7, 35, 55, 69, 79, 83, 109, and 137. When we cry out for God's victory, it implies the defeat of his enemies who are also our enemies as his people. While we shouldn't focus solely on these types of prayers, the Psalms model crying out for God to bring his righteous judgment. Whether through an unbeliever's eternal punishment or a believer's salvation in Christ, God's wrath against sin is satisfied. Jesus took the punishment for sin so the just judgment of God was carried out. An unrepentant sinner will bear punishment through hell, or Christ bore it on the cross for those who trust in him. The early church boldly prayed after Pentecost for God to fulfill promises about defeating his enemies, like quoting Psalm 2 in Acts 4. They claimed God would give the nations to his Son who will break them with a rod of iron. Just centuries later, the mighty Roman Empire that opposed them collapsed as God answered those judgment prayers. When we pray for judgment today, we aren't seeking personal vengeance or gain, but aligning ourselves with God's justice. As Romans states, God is both the just judge and the justifier of believers. We trust him to glorify himself not taking matters into our own hands. Though balanced with other prayers, we need bold petitions for God's kingdom to advance through his victory over evil. The imprecations remind us God has enemies who will be defeated, with death as the final enemy, 1 Cor. 15. Praying for judgment seeks God's justice, not ours. Psalm 139 models the humble, reverent attitude we should have, realizing we're praying according to God's will, not our own vengeance. Ankh, Yuja, Seneb. Life, Strength, Health, Learn, Like, and Subscribe. Copyright 2024 Kenneth Money. All rights reserved. Mott's Feather of Truth is a registered trademark of Project Mott Publishing, Chicago, Illinois.